Hey everyone, it's time to go international! Have you ever just wanted to get away? Are you tired of running into your ex and her new boyfriend Evan? Do you hate the fact that Evan knows more about wine than you know about anything? Well, if you never want to see her, Evan, and pretty much anyone else you know ever again, you should think about moving to one of the places on this list. But let's say you're just trying to avoid touristy spots for your next vacation. You might want to try visiting one of the most isolated places on Earth, some of which you can only get to by boat or maybe plane, sometimes even reindeer. So leave the Pontiac Aztec at home and visit Number 10, Coober Pedy, Australia. Coober Pedy is also known as the opal capital of the world. Opal as in the gem. They didn't name this place because so many girls born here named Opal or something like that. I say that because I had a coworker who named his daughter Opal. She was almost two years old when I informed him that Opal is actually a gem. He had no idea. He just thought it was a good girl sounding name. He actually thought it was a location in Russia. I don't know. Gem quality opals were first discovered there in 1915 and the opal mining industry continues to sustain this small town of about 3,000 people. They have one patch of greenery here. It's a soccer field or pitch, whichever you prefer. Everything else is that outback red-brown dirt color. The city is a two-hour flight from Adelaide or a nine-hour drive if you have some books on tape you're looking to knock out. It's kind of out there in the outback a bit. Southern Australia. Number 9. Iqaluit, Nunavut, Canada. Before we get into this one, I'm going to tell you up front. I'm going to mispronounce words in this video. It's just the way it is. Don't bother leaving a comment. I already know some of them are going to be wrong. Work it out. Alquit is only accessible by sea or air, but there are daily flights from Ottawa, so that's good. It's about 1,300 miles away. If you try and drive there, your car's going to crash and you're going to die in the snow. That's all there is to it. There's no roads going here, so you better be really, really good at off-roading for like 1,300 miles, which is pretty much impossible. Anyway, hope you got some good snowshoes. Its most famous attraction is the road to nowhere that tourists can walk, bike, drive, or ski until they end up in the middle of nowhere or until they freeze to death or get eaten by a bear. I'm not sure which one I would prefer if I had to choose. Do I want the quickness of being eaten by a bear or the slow, painful freezing to death? I don't know. Either way, I'm not going to this place. It's too far away. Number eight, Socotra Island, Yemen. Socotra Island is one of the strangest places on the planet, thanks to its weird looking dragon blood trees and a couple other weird plants. They look like something that kills a dude in a red shirt on Star Trek. You know, he leans up against it. Next thing you know, they play some weird music. He starts choking and then overacting, dies, and they find him later. Anyway, the island is located between Yemen and the Arabian Sea. The island has a bunch of rare species of plants. A third of them can't be found anywhere else on the planet. It's almost like its own little mini Madagascar. Some of those plants, like I said, do look like something from Star Trek or the X-Files type thing. The island has almost 4,000 residents and one road. Yeah, that's it, one road. Kotra Island is about 400 miles from the capital of Yemen. They do have some flights there, but they are rare and I don't know. There's a bloody civil war going on there. I wouldn't fly into Yemen or out of Yemen. I try and walk or swim or camel it or whatever you gotta do. Gotta watch out for the sand people here from Star Wars. Number seven, the Siwa Oasis, Egypt. The Siwa Oasis isn't the stereotypical oasis. This one's really there, it's not a mirage. The oasis has about 32,000 people living there and it's been there since at least the seventh century. That's when they first made contact with people living there, but they're not really sure how long it's been there. The inhabitants speak their own language, Siwi language. I'm sure that's kind of weird. Let's say you're in court in New York City, they ask if you need an interpreter. You say, yeah, Siwi interpreter. And they spend 20 minutes on Google just to find out that it is actually a thing and you're not really jerking them around. They don't get many visitors, probably because it's about a five hour bus ride from Cairo and that has to be a rough trip. I mean, Greyhound buses in the US suck. How bad are the buses in Egypt that go out into the middle of the desert? But if you tough out the bus ride, you can stay in the oasis, buy some locally grown dates and olives, swim in Cleopatra's bath, which is a mineral salt spring, which kind of cool, and then stay in a hut built out of mud and salt. Yeah, no thanks. I don't think I need to go to Egypt. Number six, Pitcairn Island, British Overseas Territory. Pitcairn Island is a British territory in the middle of the Pacific, sitting about 3,300 miles from New Zealand, which they also serve as like their contact to the outside world, or it's almost like their city hall is there, not on Pitcairn Island, it's weird. Nothing flies here, so getting there requires about a 32 to 35 hour yacht ride, depending on weather. The island's first settlers were mutineers from a ship called The Bounty. By the way, there's a great movie with Mel Gibson called The Bounty. Look it up, it's all 
all about these people. Anyway, they discovered the remnants of a Polynesian civilization, including stone gods, burial sites, and other ancient stuff when they landed and burnt their ship down. Yeah, that was in 1790. They burnt their ship because they didn't want it sitting there in case any more of the British Navy came by and was looking for them, so they wanted to be as anonymous as possible. This island is now begging for people to move there. They had 80 people at one point, and now it's around 50. So, yeah, not a lot of people. Number five, Oymyakon, Russia. It's actually Siberia, but we'll call it Russia. We'll finally get on to Russia. This remote Russian town is known as the coldest inhabited place on earth. It's only got about 500 residents and they live in the dark pretty much all day long. I think they can get about four hours of sunlight. The average temperature here is minus 58 degrees. These people have either no common sense or reliable transportation. Anyone in their right mind should leave this place immediately. Unless your feet are frozen to the ground, you should be leaving right now. Here's another thing, besides the cold, they don't have any indoor plumbing, which I guess is a result of the cold because pipes freeze. So everyone's got an outhouse. Nothing grows here. People live off reindeer meat, frozen fish, and ice cubes of horse blood. I'm not joking. I'm getting a little lump in my throat now thinking about it. It's kind of gross. Getting there takes several days. You can fly in from Moscow, but the two nearest airports are both about 560 or 70 miles away. And it's also 560 or 70 miles on a road called the Road of Bones. Number four. Longyearbyen, Norway. Longyearbyen is an island town off Norway's northern coast, and it's the world's most northern town. It's covered in snow almost all year round, and the ground never seems to unfreeze. It's like a permanent sheet of ice. Longyearbyen, Norway is so cold, it's actually illegal to bury your relatives there. They have to be flown to the mainland and taken care of there, whether they're burning them or burying them. I'm not totally sure of the process, but if they bury them in the ground on Longyearbyen, they'll, they'll never decompose. They'll just always be there. You can't drive there. A boat ride is extremely rough. Norwegian Airlines only offers three flights a week and it's a three hour flight from Oslo. It's definitely hard to get there. Number three, Barrow, Alaska. Barrow is almost as far north as Longyearbyen, Norway. Besides that, they also share the distinction of both being over 50 years old and still looking like their temporary towns. Top that off with there's no roads leading to either of them. Barrow is only accessible by plane. There's an hour and a half flight out of Anchorage if you want to risk it. More than a few planes have gone down in this area. Sitting at the very top of Alaska, their winters consist of 65 straight days of darkness. It sucks in Barrow, Alaska. I don't know why anyone lives at this one. Number two, North Sentinel Island. North Sentinel Island is a forbidden island of sorts. It's a small island in the Bay of Bengal and is home to the Sentinelese people, a tribe that have rejected, most of the time violently, any contact from the outside world. They are among the last uncontacted people to remain on the planet and have no problem killing you if you try and contact them. In 1956, some laws were passed that provided protection for the Sentinelese and other native tribes in the region. Basically, they're to be left alone. They've made it very clear they don't want to talk to us. But that doesn't stop people from ending up there, whether on purpose or by mistake. In November of 2018, John Allen Chu, I believe his name is, Chow Chu, whatever, a 26-year-old American missionary trained and sent by missionary-based all nations was killed during an illegal trip to the restricted island. He was planning on preaching Christianity to the Sentinelese people. Maybe they needed it, who knows? They certainly didn't want it. They killed him soon after his arrival. Now, there was also a ship in 1981. The Primrose ran aground on a North Sentinel reef on August 2nd, 1981, about a weekend waiting for help they noticed some men carrying spears and bows and arrows that were building boats on the beach. The captain of the Primrose radioed that it was urgent for firearms so the crew could defend themselves. They didn't receive any because of a large storm in the area and ships had a hard time getting to them. Anyway, a week after that, they were rescued by helicopter. So that was cool. They didn't get killed, but they were attacked apparently. You can still see the outline of the ship on Google map. It's on a reef on the northwest portion of the and number one, Tristan da Cunha. The volcanic island of Tristan da Cunha is in the South Atlantic and has a population of about 258 people with only nine different last names. When you live that far away from everyone else, that type of stuff is bound to happen. This is what I love about the place. The locals speak English, sort of. They invented their own dialect with words from Scottish, English, St. Helena, South African, American, Dutch, Italian, and Irish. And it also reflects various other places of origin. These guys sound like they're speaking gibberish to almost anyone else, but to themselves, they're making sense. This place is so remote, they don't have internet access anymore. They did have internet access. It was available on Tristan da Cunha from 1998 to 2000. 
2006. But its high cost made it almost unaffordable for the local population who primarily used it just to send emails. To get there, you have to time your visit to get on one of the three ships that make nine trips from Cape Town each year. That's it. They only get nine trips total. That's how they get all their supplies. Other than fish and maybe milk from cows, they don't have a lot going on there as far as supplies. I watched one guy's video about traveling to the island. Said it took him almost a week to travel from Canada to Tristan da Cunha. You know, you had to fly to South Africa, wait for the boat, then you get on across some of the roughest seas on the planet just to get to this place. It's crazy. That one's interesting. There's too much about a lot of these that you should really read up on them. They're pretty interesting. All right, so that is my most isolated places on the planet. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you got some information out of it. A little bit different, going international. Uh, I had one guy complain. He tunes in for American stuff, and he was unsubscribing because I did Vancouver one time. Like, that's almost not part of America anyway. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Tell me what you thought. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Everybody have a great day. Be nice to each other.